I was shocked when I hear this. Did you know that nearly half of the Singaporeans believe that they can never achieve financial freedom? That's right. According to a recent poll, 46% of people in Singapore feel like they are stuck in a financial rut with no way out. And guess what? I used to be one of them. And it wasn't until I realized that I was operating from these middle class habits that keep me poor and started to replace them with wealthy habits that I was finally able to break through to a million dollar net worth, buying my first ever private condo and having over five figure passive income every single month and essentially freeing myself from the rat race. That's why in this video, I'm going to share with you from my personal experience, the eight middle class habits that you might not even realize that are keeping you poor. And if you break free from them, you too can achieve your version of financial freedom. Let's start by looking at why so many people feel like they will never be financially free. The high cost of living, housing prices, and ever increasing daily expenses are weighing people down. But beyond these external factors, there's something deeper at play, our habits and our mindsets. The first habit that might be holding you back could be you not surrounding yourself with the right environment. I bet you have heard of this saying before, that you are the average of the five people that you mingle with. But frankly, I didn't quite understand the true impact of this quote until I experienced this million dollar transformation myself. If you look at my upbringing, my parents always asked me to work hard, save hard. So I always had the impression that making money was hard. And only when I graduated from university and I started learning about investing and eventually getting myself into a financial education industry, I observed the people around me, especially my ex-boss. He just didn't seem to be worried about money at all because he had multiple streams of income from stocks, options, real estate to digital assets. Because I observe how he's capable of generating multiple streams of income, he has slowly changed my mindset towards money. And because of this mindset shift, I started to learn from him and start building my own multiple streams of income as well. And over the past 10 years, I finally managed to hit my $1 million net worth. Imagine instead of positive environment like this, you constantly surround yourself with negative people, people who don't believe in financial growth, then it's going to be hard for you to break through from this mindset. That's why choose your circle wisely. Habit number two, spending more than what you earn. I know it sounds really obvious, right? But I realized a lot of people are not doing that. I often see people falling into the trap of living beyond their means, especially right now with the temptation of credit card, buy now, pay later schemes, and the pressure to keep up with our appearances. But here's the hard truth. If you constantly spend more money than what you earn, you are digging yourself into a financial hole that it's very hard to climb up. I'm not sure whether you have any friends like that, that they are crazy about cars. And whenever they make some money, they keep on thinking about buying a new car. Personally, I'm not against people who buy cars for their family needs. For example, when you have more kids, you need a bigger car. But if you are upgrading just to impress people, or just to satisfy your own ego, then I don't think that it's a very wise financial decision. Just think about how much debt you're going to incur by just getting a new car and how much stress that you might end up facing if your income suddenly dips. So if you really think true, you will start asking yourself, is it truly necessary to get that car? And if you look at my hero, Warren Buffett, despite being the sixth richest person on earth, he continued to drive the Cadillac XTS that he purchased more than 10 years ago. That's why to achieve financial freedom, you need to live within or if better, below your means. This doesn't mean that you need to live a life of complete frugality, but it does mean that you can be a more mindful towards your spending and prioritizing smart financial choices that align with your long-term goal, which leads us to the third middle-class habits that usually keep you poor. Never keep track of your income and expenses. If you don't know where your money is going and where is it coming in, how can you expect to have extra savings and not to even mention about investing? Now, don't get me wrong. Tracking your expenses isn't just about being frugal. It's also about being aware and making more informed financial decisions. Let me just show you my income and expense tracking sheet so that you can do something that is similar for yourself as well. So what I usually like to do is I keep track of all my income and expenses every single month so that I can have a clarity of what is my financial status right now. Is there any improvement that I need to do? As you can see, I actually track my income and expenses very detailedly and I 
do put them into different money jars. I'm pretty sure that you have heard of this very famous speaker. His name is T. Huff Ecker, and he talked about the importance of six money jar. So I use that inspiration and segregate my money jars into these six different money jars. Now, the first one is necessity. So this includes my transportation, uh, my mortgage, as well as some of my additional uh, recurring expenses. And then under giving, this is where I contribute to my family, right? So I pay for my helper's expenses. I pay for my family's half of the uh, grocery expenses as well. And I also give my uh, grandma $100 every single month for her to play mahjong, right? So this is where I put it under giving. And then for my financial freedom, because I do top up my SRS so that I can uh, just invest it and automate the entire process. And every single month, I contribute about $1,275 for my uh, retirement account in Singapore, right? And this is excluding whatever amount that I have put in inside the stock market in my Mumu and my Weibo brokerage account. And the reason why I exclude them is just a little bit too uh, outside of the entire picture because that is more for like a long-term investment, which I've already put up. So uh, that's why I don't include them here. And then of course, there will be long-term saving, but this one, I just leave it blank. And later on, I will explain to you why is it blank. And the next money jar is uh, education because I believe in constantly improving myself as well as an investor, as a business owner. That's why I joined different kinds of programs to help me to further improve my skill set. So these are the few programs I have joined so far this year and I con consider them to be like my uh, monthly subscription. So I actually break down the amount into like 12 months installment for myself so that I know every single month I am spending this much for my education. And then last but not least, that is my play jar where I can get to enjoy, get to travel. And of course, uh, my playing also includes uh, my treats to my friends, uh, going out with them, buying them dinner. It also includes my own daily meals when I eat out as well as my gym membership which is also recurring every single month as well uh, these are my the expenses side then i will also have my income side my income side is from my own business from the affiliates program that i affiliate uh, from uh, basically different multiple streams of income sources and then after that i will add them all in together and i will be able to track oh how much did i make this month so this is where i managed to keep track of how much income i collected this month and of course this is apart from the investment income that I've earned. Once again, the investment income from my Mumu and my Weibo, it just too much to keep track. So I'm just going to have another separate portfolio for that. Okay, so this is this one is purely just for my uh active income, I can say, right? But although affiliate income is pretty much passive, I do set a goal for myself, like how much uh, percentage should I be spending? And I don't want them to exceed because at the end of the day, you only have 100% of your income, right? You do not want your spend money jar to uh, exceed what you earn, right? This is where I know that uh, my total spending of my necessity is 27% of my income this month. So that's why it's less than the goal that I set for myself, which is less than 40%. And that's why I pass in this category and I still have a balance of $1,700 in terms of savings. And then uh, the same thing for my uh, giving as well. I set myself to give 10% uh, of my active income to my family who my loved ones. So that's why, as you can see, I still pass the goal of 10% uh, less than that. And I have some additional savings from here as well. And then obviously for my SRS, because I already topped up before. So uh, currently this one still uh, pass my less than 30% goal. So that's why I still have additional balance. And of course, one category that kind of failed this time it's not the play category because I didn't spend a lot on traveling this month because I just came back. Uh, but then for the education side, because I was intending to keep like 5% of my uh, income to into education. So right now it actually exceeds. So that is more than 10% already. So I'm either need to increase my income next month or I need to consider what can I do to maybe I should stop signing up for more programs for now until I kind of finish consuming uh, whatever things I have paid for. So for example, uh, one of the speaking programs that I've attended, uh, the payment for my own installment is until October. So in about two months time, it's going to be 
expiring. So I finish paying off the entire program, which is about $1,200 per month. Um, then I'll be able to write that off from my uh, expenses into, under education. Then I will be able to unlock more income, save the site for education purposes. So that's how it gives you clarity. Well, even though I fell for this category, but nevertheless, you can see that I passed for uh, the other five money jars. I actually have a balance of five over thousand dollars in terms of savings. So this is where I can actually decide what I want to do. I can either continue to put it inside my high yield saving accounts, or I can consider to invest in the stock market. So this is where cash gives you the flexibility of what you want to do. And at the end of the day, when you just keep on tracking, as you can see, I've been tracking that for the past one and a half year. So that's why I know that, hey, I have cash on the hand. And if the market is giving me great situation, I can unlock the opportunity because I've been making different sources of income streams and I've been tracking all my expenses so that I do not spend beyond my means. And I hope that this uh, very quick guide through of my own income and expenses tracking does give you more clue what should you be doing from now on so that you have more peace of mind and more clarity of your financial situation. Ever since I started doing all this tracking, I felt that I become more peaceful because this Excel spreadsheet really gives me a very clear state of my own financial being. And because of that, I felt that I'm more on track towards my financial goal. That's why I become happier and more at peace with myself. So if you want to get closer to financial freedom, make sure you start tracking your income and your expenses as well. Fourth on the list, work hard but not smart. I see so many people grinding day in and day out, but not necessarily making the strategic move to build wealth. In fact, being born and raised in a traditional Chinese family, that's how I grew up, working hard every day. Like that's what Chinese do, right? That's in our blood. Now, working hard is important, don't get me wrong, but working hard can only get you until a certain level. After all, if you want to climb the top tier of becoming a millionaire, you need to do something different. I'm talking about something called leverage. Now, firstly, I'm not talking about going into the stock market and borrowing a lot of money. That is definitely a no-no. But I'm talking about the concept of leverage, which date back to more than 5000 BC, where they discovered that by using a lever, a person can lift a huge amount of weight just by using little effort. Less effort, but huge amount of output. That's what I mean by leverage. That is the definition of working smarter, not harder. I remember growing up in a middle class family, I wasn't taught anything about leverage. But only when I started to surround myself with the right environment and observing how rich people they actually use leverage, that's when I started to see massive results. One good example is rental property. If you watch my video over here, you will probably know that I purchased my first million dollar private condo in Singapore and I actually bought it for investment purposes. So after the initial $300,000 deposit, I borrowed the rest of the money from the bank to finance my property. And once I collected my key, I actually decorated nicely and rented it out. And because of that right now, every single month, my mortgage is being covered by my rental. The whole idea is for many years to come, you have a tenant paying you rent and in return, actually paying down your mortgage for you. And that is the definition of leverage. Now, I know not everybody can come up with $300,000 easily. That's why another vehicle that you should consider leveraging on is the stocks and options market. But unfortunately, many middle class, the moment they hear about investing in stocks and options, they were shunned away because they thought that it's dangerous. Which leads to the next poor middle class habit number five, not learning how to invest well. Too many people just let their money sit in a bank or put inside some unit trust investment link plans that don't generate them return. In fact, their money also lose value due to inflation. However, if you know how to invest safely, for example, just by putting your money in the S&P 500 index fund, which has traditionally given investors about 10% annualized return for the past 50 years, you will have made a million dollars in 25 years. And this doesn't require you to monitor the market or having to understand individual companies. Still, your money will continue to compound with the magic of time. And if you know how to use options, you can potentially double your return and generate additional cash flow every single month, which is what I share in my free Arigato ETF Options Investing Masterclass. 
If you want to learn how to combine the power of this safe vehicle called ETF with the power of options, then make sure to register for my free masterclass via the description link below. And in the world of investing, apart from compounding effect, if you have more capital invest, that will definitely be better for you. Because by having a bigger capital, you will also be able to achieve your million dollar portfolio much, much faster. But very often, people tell me that they don't have enough money, which leads us to the next middle class habit that keep you poor. Not earning what you are worth. Too often, I see people settle for less than what they deserve because they are just afraid or too humble to ask for more. I used to grow up thinking that just by working hard, I would be able to earn brownie points. And I used to just keep my head down and not ask for much. But honestly, if you want to get ahead, you have to charge what you are worth and learn to speak up for yourself. So every year before your annual performance review, make sure you accumulate throughout the year sort of the bread folder that includes all the accomplishments that you have done for that year. How much you have made for your company? How much did you save for your division? And what kind of projects that did you initiate that bring positive impact to the company? Whatever that you can quantify, just add to your bread file and present it during your performance review. This way, you have actual proof of what you bring to the table. And that's how you are able to demand the top dollar that you deserve. And remember, asking what you are worth is not rude. So I really want you to be brave, speak up for yourself, and get into the habit of earning what you are worth. Now, speaking of income, I remember back in my early 20s, I was only depending on one single source of income, my paycheck. At that time, not only did I have a bunch of student loan that I need to pay off, I could also see that if I got laid off from my job, everything in my life, everything good that I enjoyed would disappear in one night. And that was seriously a very vulnerable place to be because that was exactly what my family went through when my father got laid off when I graduated from university. So the next middle class habit that keep you poor is depending on only one source of income. Especially we know that in today's world, job security is no longer a guarantee. And having multiple streams of income isn't just a luxury, but a necessity. Whether is it through side hustles, investment, rental properties, you need to diversify your income sources and that is the key to financial freedom. If you look at rich people, they got multiple streams of income working for them. In fact, I have eight streams of income that are passive and that's not even counting on the ones that are active. So yes, you do need to be a little bit more creative and resourceful after your nine to five. But if you're willing to work on it, you are able to build so many multiple streams of income that a lot more freedom for you in the long run. In fact, I talk about how you can generate $600 passive income from here using options. So do check this out for more ideas. And finally, the last middle class class habit that might be keeping you poor. This self-limiting mindset. Do you know that if just 10 years ago, I would never be able to believe that I would become a millionaire in my early 30s. But I realized that exactly because of my mindset back then, making money was so hard for me because I just didn't believe in the possibilities. The thing is, if you don't believe that you are able to achieve financial freedom, then you are right. But at the same time, if you believe that you can achieve financial freedom, you are also right. Since regardless which mindset that you adopt, the reality will come true. Why not believe in something that is good for you and really motivate yourself to embark on that journey to achieve financial freedom? After all, law of attractions really work in life. So it's time to shift your mindset. Instead of saying, I can't, ask yourself, how can I? Everyone's journey to financial freedom is different, but it's achievable as long as you believe it's doable and take the necessary action to make it happen. So there you have it, the eight middle class habits that keep you poor. But now you know, you have the power to change. So start breaking free from all these habits and you will be one step closer to achieving your financial freedom. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it to your friends and family to inspire them to start this financial freedom journey together with you. Also, do remember to follow my Telegram channel over here because I constantly post a lot of investment and personal development updates over there. If you would love to have some other additional topics that you want me to cover, do leave it in the comment section so that I can share with you more in my next video. Until the next time, make sure to check out some of my videos right here to continue your learning journey. In the meantime, enjoy your beautiful day ahead and thanks for watching. Arigato!